Good morning, church family. I want to share uh, Colossians 3, verse 12 through 15 with you this morning. It's great to be with you after a great family worship Sunday last week. What an awesome Sunday. So let's look at Colossians 3, 12 through 15. It says this, Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace. And be thankful. Resentment in Bill Wilson, as he put it in uh, the uh, book Alcoholics Anonymous, he said this, and I, I really like it. It's from page 64 of the big book. Resentment is the number one offender. It destroys more alcoholics than anything else. From it stem all sorts of spiritual disease. For we have not only been mentally and physically ill, we have been spiritually sick. When the spiritual malady is overcome, we straighten out both mentally and physically. That resentment as the number one offender in, in recovery takes more people out than pretty much anything I know is, but people go back out. It also prevents us from being fully healed as we can be and to walk in freedom. Resentments nag at us and they cut at us. And if we let them build up, we find ourselves struggling with them constantly. We let people own our hearts and minds who we have a resentment against. When what we should be doing is praying for them. Bill Wilson also says in the big book that uh, the resentment is a dubious luxury for other men, referring to people who aren't alcoholics. But I think it's a dubious luxury for all of us because as we let resentments rule the day in our lives, we can't walk at peace. You know that feeling you have in your heart when you have a strong resentment against someone. And, and maybe this will help you today. And maybe it'll be a challenge because as I say these words, maybe you thought of someone that you're struggling with a resentment about. But God called us to love those people and to forgive them. And that doesn't mean forgiving someone doesn't mean what the person did is okay. I kind of think that forgiving someone lets us have peace, okay? And it lets us say to God, you handle this, I can't. You're the judge, not me. You're the Lord, and your will be done, not mine. As I move forward in my walk with God, every time I have to be careful of resentments, they can eat at me and cause nothing but trouble. Each of us has our own challenges along these lines, but usually it's just a part of our sin nature that we get offended over things that we often shouldn't. Sometimes we get over offended of things we have every right to be offended over but it still doesn't do us any good in our souls and in our heart. And somehow, by the power of God, we have to really tr work hard or try hard to get over these resentments. Now, I work with a, a, a group of people in recovery that have reason to have resentments galore, especially with some of the awful things I hear about that happen to people we work with in their childhood. Some of the things that have been done seem unforgivable, and really, by our own power, they are unforgivable. Forgivable, But by the power of God and the changing of our heart, we can learn to forgive. Because for us as alcoholics, the option is we, we end up drunk again. When we have pain and we have resentment and we have anger, we know how to make it go away really easy. And we do the same thing as Christians. We turn to other things. We turn to false idols. And we let those things uh, control us and... Um, it makes us feel different, but it doesn't change anything. Working through that process of forgiving someone, especially the unforgivable, is one of the hardest things you'll ever do. But what does it say? Since as members of one body, you were called to peace. I have a little saying I use with my friends and my friends in recovery and my sponsees as they come to me with things they have resentments over. And I look a guy right in the face and I'll say, do you want to be right or do you want to be happy? And what I'm really saying is, do you want to be right or do you want to be at peace with the world, with yourself, and with God? I hope this helps you today. I hope maybe it was challenging. I'm sorry if it made you think of a situation you don't want to think about. But maybe this is time, a time for you to look at that and see how to make it right. 
we all have these struggles. There isn't anyone who doesn't. There's always uh, interpersonal relationships that um, things happen that shouldn't. But by the love of God and the power of God, we as Christians can sow a different way of dealing with them. And that just might bring someone to the Lord. God bless you and have a great day.